Hello, this is Walter Leite. In this video, I will show you how to use generalized boosted modeling to estimate propensity scores. Um, this is an example uh, from chapter two of the book, Practical Propensity Score Methods Using R. Um, and these, it is the fourth example in the series. The first example showed how to impute missing data before estimating propensity scores. The second video uh, showed how to uh, estimate propensity scores with logistic regression. Third video showed how to estimate propensity scores with classification trees and random forests. Uh, I recommend watching those three videos before watching this one. Um, so generalized boosted modeling here is being used to estimate the propensity score of students participating in a career academy in high school. Um, generalized boosted modeling is a way to improve on any uh, predictor. Um, McCraffrey, Ridgeway, and colleagues, they created the library Twang that we use here. And that library is particularly uh, aiming at implementing generalized boosted modeling to estimate propensity scores. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is load the library to egg. Um, and then we'll set a random seed to allow replication of results, uh, given that uh, this is, um, no, the results are have randomness to them. Um, then we will convert the treatment into a numeric variable instead of a factor because this is required by the Twang package, the way it was programmed. Um, now, the, the main function to estimate propensity scores with GBM is, is called PS. Um, we'll provide the propensity score formula, which is shown here, and it, it shows the variables uh, like this, but this is not a linear model because generalized boosted modeling is able to detect automatically um, polynomial effects and, and interactions between these variables. Um, we are um, saying that we, we are using the imputed data set, the first imputed data set to do this. Um, and we are doing 10,000 trees. Now, um, generalized boosted modeling doesn't have um, a natural stopping criteria. So the, the solution can improve and then uh, the quality increase, decrease with time. We will have to check whether we seems like we achieved the best covariate balance. Um, we have to stop, uh, we have to specify the interaction depth. So we have to say interaction depth is four meaning I'm allowing up to four way interactions between variables. Um, now the stopping criteria we are trying to optimize covariate balance, which is the uh, similarity of the distributions of covariates between treatment and control. Um, there are several stopping methods implemented in, 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 in this function. The default is, is p-values, which stands for p-values. Um, so we're trying to get the p-values as high as possible so there is no significant difference between treatment and control. But here I'm not using the default, I'm using ES max, which is the maximum effect size. Uh, so this is actually minimizing the, the, the effect size um, bit of the, so it's minimizing the difference in means between treatment and control. And I'm specifying here that I'm estimating the ATT which it has no consequence for the estimation of propensity scores. Um, and I'm saying that I have sampling weights in this data set. So once this PS is run, it's important to, to do some diagnostic conversions. The best way is to look at this plot, uh, plot by MyGBM. I'll show you how it looks like. And you can see here, this is the plot that it shows that the, the balance measure, which is the effect size, dropped 
and then um, increase it. That's a sign that it, it converged to a minimum. Um, if this minimum was close to the number of, the total number of interests of the total number of iterations, we would be concerned and we would want to run GBM again with a higher total number of iterations. But here, because the minimum was, you know, between zero and 2,000, far away from the maximum, which is 10,000, uh, I'm not particularly concerned. I think the results achieved the minimum. Now, to estimate the propensity scores, we just uh, extract an object from the, within my GBM here, uh, the, the object is called PS that contains the propensity scores. Um, and it looks like this. Um, so then I just assign them to, to the data set I have. So this is how to run a generalized boosted modeling to estimate propensity scores. Even though it's a complex method, the PS function of the Twang package makes it very easy to implement. Um, and it's a powerful method to estimate propensity scores because it estimates propensity scores trying to optimize on covariate balance, which is the goal of propensity score analysis.